Chatham Naval Base has long distinguished historical links to the Royal Navy. Of all the ships built in the dockyard, HMS Victory would be the most familiar ship with its links to Chatham and Trafalgar. As the centuries passed, the Royal Navy grew stronger, became a force to be reckoned with and respected all over the world. Men who joined the Royal Navy were prepared to lay down their lives for their country. Thousands did at war, in treacherous seas and devastating battles. But not one of the sailors at HMS Pembroke would have imagined that they were to lose their lives whilst resting in their hammocks on dry land on the night of the 3rd of September, 1917. There was no chance for them to fight back in one of the first nighttime air attacks the world had ever witnessed. This is the story of the bombing of the drill shed at HMS Pembroke in Chatham on that night and how it was remembered by a commemorative service and parade organised by the Royal Naval Association in partnership with the universities at Medway on the 10th of September 2017. The drill shed was used as an overflow dormitory when seamen were waiting to be transferred to another area for training or another ship such as HMS Vanguard. The shed was also used at this time to house some sailors to avoid them being exposed to a possible meningitis outbreak in the accommodation blocks. Two of the men in the shed at the time were Sparky and ship's right James Warne, whose wife and children lived in Nelson Road, not a mile away, and Thomas Ginn, who was initially a fisherman enlisted from Newfoundland in Canada. The Germans had been developing an airplane that would change the status of warfare forever. They built the Gotha plane, which only came into service in August 1917, a month before the attack. With a 77.9-foot wingspan, which could carry 14 60-pound bombs, and the ability to fly at an altitude of 21,000 feet, there was very little chance of it being shot down as the amount of anti-aircraft artillery was very limited at the time. They decided to attack in one of the first nighttime air raids the world had heard of. One of the other men in the drill hall that night was Arthur Voice, who was born in Surrey in 1895. Arthur was a competent swimmer in his early years, a choir master and an organist. He joined the Navy on the 7th of February 1916 and was based in HMS Pembroke in Chatham.
Well, I remember my grandmother telling me about the, inc the terrible incident at the drill hall and that the roof was all made of glass and that all the glass came down and the people were cut to pieces. Um, and she, my grandfather, was only 30, I think it was his birthday actually the day before. He did actually survive until the next day, so he wasn't one of the people that was killed sort of instantly. He was obviously taken to hospital. And we've been to see his grave at the uh, military cemetery, and it says that it was the 4th of September when he actually died. But it's lovely to be here today to remember him and all the other people that were killed. Very, very sad happening. Yeah. We have had uh, the odd descendant uh, appear at the services since 2006, but uh, this year a large number have turned up and have asked to lay, uh, lay wreaths and have been supplied with history of their relatives that they possibly don't know. A lot of this research has been done by the university who have shown great cooperation with the Royal Naval Association in establishing this memorial service. The reason we're here of course is to remember all those poor unfortunate men uh, who died on the night of 3rd September 1917. They shall not grow old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them. When you go home, tell them of us and say, for your tomorrow we gave our today.